All right. So we're going to talk about 5.6 and 5.7 real quick for those of you that are out right now. You use the triangle inequality theorem. So those triangle inequality theorems start with this. The larger angle is opposite the longer side. Conversely, if two angles are not congruent, the longer side is opposite the larger side. So basically what that means is if you look at triangle ABC, they give you the side length. And if they want you to know what is the largest side, you circle the largest side. All right, and directly opposite that is going to be the biggest angle. The biggest angle is opposite the biggest side. The smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. So the largest angle would be C. All right, now in the next one, they ask what is the measure of angle E, what is the shortest side, D, E, F. All right, so the triangle adds up to 180. 30 and 90 is 120. We subtract that from 180 and we get 60. So they may not give you all three angles. You have to use the triangle angle sum to get the third angle. All right? That means 30, 60, 90, and they want the shortest side. You circle the smallest angle, which is 30, and that makes your smallest side tidy up. All right? We come down here, same idea, just real quick, speed round. Largest and smallest angles. All right? The longest side is 7, so the largest angle would be E. Smallest side is 4, so the smallest angle would be F. All right, same thing here. 8 makes Q the largest. 3 makes R the smallest. All right. And then finally, 10 makes C the largest. 5 makes B the smallest. And the reverse works as well. We come down here, 130 and 15 is 145. Subtract from 180, we get 35. All right. Longest side would be opposite the 130, so that's DF. Shortest side, since there's the 15, would be EF. Coming over here, 35 and 70 is 105. Subtract from 180, you get 75. All right. The longest would then be opposite the 75, so that would be the biggest. All right. So that would be PQ. The shortest would be opposite the 35, so that would be the arc. All right. Obviously, this is an obtuse angle. It's the, it's the, that's got to be the longest angle. The angles have to be less than 180. So that means SV has to be the longest side. To get the shortest side, you got to compare the two acute angles. Since 35 is less than 45, that makes my shortest SV. All right, so that's how we handle the first part of that. All right, next up we have the second part of that. For any triangle, the sum of the lengths. The sum of the lengths of any two sides is greater than the length of the third side. This is known as the triangle inequality theorem. All right, AB plus BC is greater than AC. AC plus BC is greater than AB. AB plus AC is greater than AB. All right, you have to know that the sum of the two smaller sides is greater than the longest side. So if I look at letter A, I got three numbers, 22, 33, and 25. I take the two smallest numbers and add them up. 22 plus 25 equals 47. Since 47 is greater than 3, 33, yes, that is certainly a uh, triangle, able to be a triangle. All right, 3, 7, and 11. 3 plus 7 is 10. Since 10 is less than 11, the third side, the answer that would be All right, you do not need to do all three. It's not necessary. All right, all you have to do is take the two smallest. If they're bigger than the longest, then they're done. So another speed round, if I go down to 8, can a triangle have side lengths 2, 3, and 7? 2 plus 3 is 5. Since 5 is less than 7, no. Make sure you get the smallest. 7 and 12 is 19. Since 19 is greater than 13, the answer is yes. 6 plus 8 is 14. Since 14 is greater than 9, that would be yes as well. All right, now the second part of this. Two sides of a triangle are 11 and 12 feet long. What could be the length of the third side? Again, they're doing all three. All right, I'm telling you it's not necessary. All you do is create what is called a compound inequality. We'll practice these when we return home from break. All right?
You put your variable in the middle, whatever you choose, the difference on the left and the sum on the right. The difference, of course, comes from subtraction. The sum comes from addition. So if I look at this, I got 11 and 12. 11 plus 12 is 23. 12 minus 11 is 1. So that means my third side can be any length between 1 and 23. So if I come down to the bottom, two sides of the triangle are 5 and 3. What could be the length of the third side? Again, put your variable in the middle. Inequality is open to the right. 5 plus 3 is 8, so that goes on the right. 5 minus 3 is 2. All right, you can always check to make sure the numbers make sense with the inequality. Same idea with the next one. 15 plus 12 gives me 27. 15 minus 12 gives me 3. So the third side would have to be 3 to 27. All right, then we go to 5.7, which is pretty much what's called the hinge theorem. All right, consider triangle ABC. In triangle XYZ, if AB is congruent to XY, BC is congruent to YZ, and the measure of angle Y is greater than the measure of angle B, then XZ is greater than AC. This is known as the hinge theorem or the SAS inequality theorem. The S's stand for sides. They need to be congruent. The angle they give you has to be the included angle. The difference is that angle is not going to be congruent. All right? Basically, with biconditional if and only if formats, XZ is greater than AC, if and only if. Angle Y, the measure of angle Y is greater than the measure of angle B. XZ is less than AC, if and only if. The measure of angle Y is less than the measure of angle B. If I come down here, all right, I notice I got a pair of congruent sides. I got the included angle listed in both. All right, so you take the two angles they give you and put them in either order, 80 and 85. 80 is less than 85. Opposite 80 is segment MN. Opposite the 85 is segment GI. So therefore, MN is less than GI. All right, you could reverse them, certainly. You could say 85 is greater than 80. And then your inequality would be reversed. GI is greater than MN. All right. We come down to the bottom. We ask ourselves, self, what's bigger, 90 or 93? We would say 90 is less than 93. Opposite 90 is LP. Opposite the 93 is AX or SA. So we could say LP is greater than AX or AX is greater than LP. The converse works as well. All right, the converse works as well. All right. So seven is greater than six. Therefore, the measure of angle Q is greater than the measure of angle M. Boom. So if I look at the two sides, Congruent, congruent, 12 and 12. All right, they tell me TR is greater than ZX. If TR is greater than ZX, opposite TR would be angle S. Opposite to ZX would be angle Y. So the measure of angle S would be greater than the measure of angle Y. The measure of angle S is 72. The measure of angle Y is 5X. Well, the one thing you got to worry about with angles is this. All right, I'm going to flip these. I'm going to have 5x plus 2 is less than 72, which I'm allowed to do. And I flip that, and I flip that. At the same time, an angle has to be positive, so we put a greater than 0 on the other side. This is a compound inequality, which we'll practice when we return from the break. The only difference between compound inequalities and these equations is instead of doing it in two spots, you do it in three. Read on the left, center, and right. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 2 minus 2 becomes 5x. 70. Divide by 5. And I get x is less than 14 and greater than negative 2. Alright, the rest of that page we'll go over the Monday we come back from the break. If you're back in school, great.
If not, enjoy your break, and we will talk to you soon. Take care.